What is up everybody? This is Michael File Sage checking in here. And today I wanted to make a video about casing layers. Now casing layers are a word or like the word casing is a word that's commonly heard in the cultivation world, but often misunderstood. Uh, because people like to call, for example, uh, when they're spawning their tub, they put their substrate and they put their spawn, they mix it up, and then they leave a little bit of usually cocoa core substrate, the same stuff that they mix the grains with, to put on top of the grains to cover them as like a last step. That's not a casing layer really, that's called a pseudo casing because it's the word pseudo is in there because it's not real a real casing, it's a fake casing. Uh, it's just basically just covering the grains. It's got really not much to do with retaining moisture. It doesn't do much compared to a true casing because the mycelium will colonize that top layer. And with a true casing, you don't really want the mycelium to colonize or at least colonize much. The main reason for a casing is to just keep a nice humid climate for the mycelium underneath the casing. That's why you don't really want the mycelium to colonize. Now that happens. And what you can do, you know, depending on your situation and depending on the species, you could add some more casing. I do that. Um, for example, with the grass lovers, I had to add casing occasionally, but you don't really have to unless like when you're harvesting, you take out a bunch of casing and then you should probably uh, fill in the holes, uh, so to speak, literally, actually. <laughs> but um, so yeah, casing, you don't want them to colonize. So usually it's a different material from the substrate itself. For example, in, this, in these guys, these poo onlys, which by the way, guys, I'm going to start calling, calling them ponies. Uh, with ponies, I use a dung substrate, right? So I use dung and core 50 50 right i don't want to put a top layer of dung and use that as a casing because dung is delicious for these guys they're going to eat it up and then i'm going to be back with the same problem no i'm going to use properly pasteurized same with the dung i'm going to make another video on that properly pasteurized jiffy mix and the reason i use jiffy mix you can make your own casing at home but the reason i use jiffy mix is because it's ready to use out of the bag it's a perfect casing after proper pasteurization. Uh, it's basically got everything you need, which is 50% vermiculite, 50% peat moss, and a little bit of hydrated lime. And what that does is it, is, it, is it adjusts the pH to make it more contamination resistant, and it also makes it less tasty for the mycelium, so it's less likely to colonize. So yeah, this is what I use. So that's basically what it is. Now, actually, Jiffy Mix is not a complete 50-50 mix. It's like 70, 30, I think 30% vermiculite and 70% peat moss or somewhere thereabouts, but it gets the job done beautifully. So, all right guys. So in this video, I'm just going to be applying the casing on top on these ponies. So hope you enjoy. Now let's see. So you see it's fully colonized, right? It's fully colonized and this is perfect. They're starting to form hyphal knots, but they're not forming primordia yet. Primordia are basically like the little white dots that you get right before. The, the mushies come out. So we are right on the cusp of that or almost at the cusp of that. So I'm going to apply the casing. You don't, most of the time when you apply casing, you apply it when they're like this. You don't want to have primordia on there when you apply the casing because a primordia formed in those conditions and you want to keep those conditions generally. Not in all cases, sometimes it's okay, but you don't want them to start pitting. You want to apply these guys on here. And also these guys actually, sorry, a lot of species other than core lovers, right? Other than the ones that can just grow on straight core need a casing because core lovers just don't give a crap. They're okay with like basically everything. That's why you get like side pins everywhere and stuff. With these guys, you barely get side pins or like a lot of species that need a casing because they're, they will come out exactly where the casing is and that makes it so much easier. But for that, they are a little more tricky to get the FAE and the moisture content right. Right, the humidity and the FAE cycle, it's got to be more on point. They're a lot, they're they're quite a bit less forgiving. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to apply the casing. Now there's certain techniques, you know, so I said that you usually apply the casing once it's fully colonized, but there's certain techniques people experiment with. For example, applying a casing right at spawn, you know, that's another technique. So, you know, there, there's a lot of different ways. There's no like straight rule. I'm just telling you guys, generally, you apply a casing layer right at full colonization or almost full colonization. You don't want to wait too long. All right, so enough talking from me. And I'm going to, and the reason I'm using gloves for this, if I was using core lovers, I just, I'm just wiping my hands with alcohol now. Um, the reason I, I use gloves for this and I don't do it with core lovers is because uh, casing is slightly nutritious and dung especially is very nutritious. 
it's not just core where there's no nutrition, right? So you got to be careful about what you're introducing in here. Obviously, they're in open air, so you can't really do much. But if you can, it, it does help to limit it a little bit. So yeah, th this is done in field capacity. As I said, I will make a casing video. So bon voyage, guys. Wish these guys luck. So, you know, different species want different thickness, but generally... Um, with poo lovers and grass lovers, basically just barely covering the mycelium is fine. Yeah, and this casing was uh, very, very moldy as I showed in the last video. There's a picture that I posted on the last video. And also in my community post, I'm showing you guys how moldy this bag was. It was like full of like this green mold, basically sporulating at that point. It was originally white, but then they're all green. I don't think it's trick, but I don't know, it could be trick. But it, it didn't look trick green, or it didn't look like trick at all. So yeah, who knows what it is. But... See, proper pasteurization does kill. And you know, while I'm at it, I might as well talk about, you know, I had a comment that was asking me on the last video, I think, about um, about this Jiffy Mix exactly. And he was asking like, oh, so you don't uh, sterilize it? Pasteurization is okay to kill the mold? And I said, yes. And I thought I would like to explain to you guys why that is. Is because proper pasteurization, if you properly pasteurize, that's, Basically, the way I do it is an hour and a half at 140 to 170 degrees, but I don't go to 170. I do one, 140 to 160 between there. I like to keep it. So you just basically keep the jar in there for an hour and a half. And what that does is it kills the mold. And it also, but it, but you see, unlike sterilization, it keeps some bacteria alive, some beneficial bacteria alive and other microbes that will help fight contamination in the future, that will help fight off molds in the future. Whereas with sterilization, you just kill all of it, good and bad. And you don't want that because then your substrate is at the mercy of whatever is in your environment. So yeah, that's basically why. Now, you know, this isn't just like theoretical stuff. I do have real experience with uh, pasteurizing. I used this casing layer before, this moldy casing layer with the grass lovers, and they've been fruiting for months now. Another thing about casing layers is they will eventually contaminate because peat moss does have nutrition and eventually they will lose out to contamination, but you, sh you should be able to get a couple of flushes out of them. General rule, quarter inch for casing is what a lot of people go with. I don't really keep count. I just I just know if it's too thick. <laughs> Just make sure it's not too thick with these guys. But yeah, these guys are usually uh, grown in like greenhouses and stuff because they have much more FAE and humidity requirements than the regular old core lovers. But they do reward you for all that work, definitely. Starting to look good, guys. And generally, you want to keep them moist, of course. But you know, like you, when you make your spawn and substrate mix, you know, when you mix it up, right? You want to sort of pack it down, but with the casing, you don't want to pack it down. You want them to be somewhat loose. And you don't want to disturb the mycelium when you're applying them. Because these guys, they're very, very fast at colonizing, as you guys have seen, right? You can see the whole process of how they colonize in my videos. But the mycelium itself is much uh, like wispier and thinner, very, very tomentose than the coral lovers. So, you know, like coral lovers, people say, oh, you know, rhizo equals fast. Not, not always, right? Like th these guys are faster than core lovers at colonizing, way faster, but they're tomentos as crap, right? Uh, let me take a look. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is actually not bad at all. All right, I'll give you guys a better look in a second, but I think it's uh, looking pretty good. I think that's pretty good. And you know, like uh, talking about casing species, you know, nowadays, because there's so much more people coming into this hobby, so much more resources and so much more easily accessible due to videos and, you know, like lots of different avenues of learning, a very clear and easy ways of learning stuff for this hobby uh, that are available today that weren't available in the past. You know, it was very, very verbose in the past, you know, very text-based, very forum-based. Uh, so now there's a lot of people that are coming. There's very easy guys out there. A lot of them do have some misinformation, but there's some good ones out there as well. So because of that, though, there's a lot of people coming into this hobby, right? And what that means is that there's more people playing with genetics. And what that means is that there's a lot more people growing them. And what that means is there's a lot more mushrooms 
being domesticated, being stabilized. That includes different species, right? Because in the past, different species were just like a very small minority of the whole growing population, what people like to call exotics, like these guys. And so because of that, uh, eventually, I believe they will. you won't even have to use casing because they're just going to be so, so used to like tub-like conditions or like home grow amateur mycology conditions that uh, they, they won't need a casing. And there's some evidence for this. You know, I've been following a lot of threads on the Esmeri about various species, you know, reading tons and tons of pages on it to, to sort of synthesize all that information down and apply it here is that uh, there's many cases, including these guys, of fruiting and fruiting pretty well, getting a pretty good pin set even without a casing. So a lot of, lots of experimentation going on. You know, over the last like two years or so, there's been like so many of like varieties, you know, strains of these guys that have come up compared to the past. And also like other species as well, you know, like for example, the, the Mexican grass lovers have a bunch, you know, of new varieties that weren't there a couple of years ago. So I, I see this trend of more species. And in my old video that I had to take down in my old channel, called Species Talk, I talked about how different species will become the next big thing in mycology. And just wait for it, guys. It will be. All right, guys. Michael File Sage checking out. Now, I'm going to keep this misted, you know, a little bit. Uh, keep it moist. All right, guys. Michael File Sage checking out.